Well, good morning and welcome to this morning's reflection. So, let's sit down together this morning and continue to talk about desire. How many desires do you have? For most of us, I think for many of us, we have a large number of desires all fighting for space in our lives. Some of us may have so many, we just battle, really battle to know what to do with them. And they can make us confused about which ones are important. And they may lurk a fear that we have allowed the wrong ones to flourish. So how do we distinguish between the superficial desires and the deep desires? Between healthy and unhealthy desires? I think that this confusion around desire can create in us a suspicion about the desires that we have. And so there is a tendency to want to throw out our desires and try instead to focus on an objective set of values. So I suppose we often try to turn to a list of oughts and shoulds rather than looking at our God-given desires. Others of us may think that we should not even have desires that or certainly not entertain them. After all, aren't our desires rooted in selfishness? Would it not be better if we moved away from our desires? So I think these are the things that go through many minds when we come to think about desires. Many of us face this quandary. St. Ignatius encourages us to ask God for what we truly desire. Now don't cheat and say to God, I want what you want. Because that's just mouthing to God what seems appropriate without being open and honest with God and with ourselves about what it is we truly want. When we deny our individual and God-given desires, what happens? Well, we tend to erode our own selves. We deny the unique person that God has created us to be. So our poor relationship with our own desires means that we find it hard to see desire as a key to spiritual growth. So what is at the core of this denial of our inner desires? And it may be that at the core of it is our image of God. We see God as a God lacking in passion, lacking in desire himself, almost a disengaged God, or even a disinterested God, one who doesn't have time for me and my small needs. We battle to see God as passionate about us, We battle to see him as one who moves out to touch our lives because he desires us. If we see God as aloof and disengaged, we think that desire reflects a lack of balance. Desire introduces confusion, a lack of control and subjectivity to our lives, especially 
when it's linked to sexuality. And so we run from desire to a place of order and a place of self-control. If we see our deep desires as disturbing and misleading, we will avoid embracing that part of us that is God-given. And so you might like to reflect today on, on how you see your desires and whether your desires and your attitude towards your desires lead you into a deeper relationship with God. Or are you running away from them into a place that depends more on your will and your self-control rather than falling into the arms of the one who passionately loves you. May you have a blessed day. Amen.